let me pray for us. It's a good way to start, isn't it? Oh, Father, we love you. We receive your love for us. I ask you to fall this morning. I pray that this morning as I share, Lord God, that your power and your words will be released to your people. I pray that they would feel your invitation into the deepest places of you, Father. I pray that they would feel the courage and the truth that they are your sheep that hear your voice clearly. I pray that they would realize the unique anointing on every single one of their lives, that they have a calling, that they have a purpose, that they have a destiny that God has built them for. I pray that they would receive the value that you have for them, that you see that they are precious gems of gold. Thank you, Father. In your precious name, amen. Thank you all for having me again up here. I guess you didn't really have a choice. (laughs) Um, But if you weren't here with us last week, we, I started a series on The Secret Place. And if you don't know what The Secret Place is, it's any amount of time that you're going away to meet with the Father. Another word for it is your quiet time. What does that look like? What's happening there? Is it changing you? Are you really encountering the Father? And um, last week I talked about the why of the secret place. Why do we do the secret place? And this week I'm going to kind of go into a lot of more practical tips, the how. And the way I like to look at it is the why is kind of like, if you're looking at a body, the why is like the flesh and the heartbeat. And the how is kind of like the bones, the structure. And the flesh and the heart without the structure can't get very far. But the bones, the structure without the heart is is dead. So if we go to the Lord every single morning, but we're not engaging our heart with the living God, it's going to feel kind of dead. But if we're going, but we never have a structure and we go to the Lord once a year, we can't, we're not going to go very deep in the Lord. And so I really want to talk about creating a structure for you so that you can really feel like you're thriving, maturing, and going deep in the Lord. And you realize that you're building your own personal momentum with him. And you're not having to ride on the churches, some leaders, this or that. Doesn't that sound like a fun, good idea? Um, I'm going to do a quick recap of the why. I will say, if you weren't here last week, or th- yeah, if you weren't here last week, um, I'd really encourage you to go back and listen to that. It's on our uh, Oak City, Birmingham YouTube channel um, because this week kind of it builds off of that. So, but just a couple of recaps is um, that we talked about becoming aware of the Holy Spirit, becoming aware of the presence of the Lord. And it's in the secret place that we become aware of our permission slip into the Holy of Holies given to us by Jesus Christ. That I become aware of, it doesn't matter if I'm Billy Graham, Kate Henderson, doesn't matter what I did last night. Who, like, it didn't, like I'm coming, coming under the same blood of Jesus, that Billy Graham comes under, that Graham Cook, that Bill Johnson, that Heidi Baker, that we all are coming under the exact same blood of Jesus because it's his righteousness that brings us into the deepest places of God. And when all of a sudden our minds are clicked into that, it's like it, it helps usher us into those deeper places. But if you tell yourself, I'm not going to go very deep with the Lord, I'm just going to read some scripture and move on, that'll probably be what happens. And so what I want to do is kind of notch up your faith a little bit. The Lord, the currency of heaven is faith. We talked about, um, we learned that when we set ourselves to seek him, we prosper. And when we prosper, the world around us prospers. And that's from 2 Chronicles 13, 14, 2 Chronicles 26, 5, and Proverbs 11, 10. And I'm not talking, again, about the prosperity gospel. I'm talking about the prosperity that God is talking about, about the innermost part of you is prospering. 
I'm experiencing the peace, the shalom of the Father of heavens. I'm experiencing true inner joy, like true prosperity. And that leaks out into the world around us. Thank you, Father. We talked about living and leading from the secret place. When you encounter God in the secret place, you lead others in the public place. But when you don't encounter God in the secret place, you find yourself leaning on the leading of others in the public place. And all that means is we're going to be guided by someone. And if I'm not the Holy Spirit, another name for the Holy Spirit is, the, is our guide. And if I'm not letting him guide me in that secret place in the morning and I have this intentional time to get with him, all of a sudden when I get out there and someone else is saying, I'm going to do my life this way, I'm going to make these decisions, I'm going to drink this, eat that, run five miles, you're just following there, them. You're like, oh, that's a good idea. But that's not yours. That's them. God, what are you calling me to do? <clears throat> We talked about knowing him in our minds and in our experience. We want to be a church that knows God. Yeah, like we want to really know the word of God, but we want to actually experience the word of God, where this is part of my story, my life. Like God isn't, I don't just know that he's faithful. I think about how my dad and I, we go to breakfast every week. And I, know, I could read a book that would tell me that my dad is a generous man. Or I could go to breakfast every single week with my dad and experience that he pays for my breakfast every single week. And I, I can feel that. I'm experiencing that. And it impacts me, and it makes me want to do that for other people. You see the difference? Knowing something about someone and experiencing it about them. God wants us to, to have both of those. And a lot of that happens in the secret place. All of what happened this morning during worship, the Lord's like, hey, we can do that in your living room. <laughs> um, so now we're going to kind of start moving on to the bones, the how. And if you start feeling like, wow, this feels a little, a little rigid, a little bony, it's because it is without the heart. It is without the encounter, but with the presence of God, it's so rich. And it takes you far and it can take you really deep. So in the seat backs in front of you, Cole helped me make, well, he made this. Um, I just put in some words, but he made this beautiful card called the Secret Place Prompts. And these are ideas, ways, tips, practices of how to encounter the presence of God, how to grow and mature your life. Um, I will say the way I use this is I have, I don't know if y'all know what Evernote is, um, or if you can imagine Microsoft Word, everyone knows what Microsoft Word is. I have all of these questions written out, and I call it like a it, my secret place prompts template, if you will, and it's all blank. And I copy it and like paste it to my, you all call it a digital journal, if you will, um, on Evernote. And I just put in the date and I put in the blank template and then I kind of fill it in. And I will say, as I go through this with you, I do not go through every single one of these every single day. Um, Unless you are an empty nester and your hobby is quiet times, AKA Jean Miller, my mom, then um, you probably won't get through all of this. And that's okay. That's not the purpose. These are, I'm going to share a lot of ways to encounter him. And you can be like, oh, yeah, I love that. That, that works for me. And I want to try that. Or, oh, that doesn't really sound like something I would really enjoy. <laughs> and maybe some, at some other point in my life, you know, you get to pick and choose and ask the Holy Spirit to kind of lead you. Um, so I do want to share that with you. Um, one more thing I want to say about this, and I'm going to have you do a little practice with me, and this is for you, uh, type three on the Enneagram, type A's on the DIS test, type C. I want you to repeat after me and say, this is not a to-do list. This is not a checklist. Okay, good job. Again, what this is, is this is a structure 
This is ideas, tools for you to encounter and experience God, okay? One of my favorite authors, his name is John Mark Comer. He wrote the book, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. It's one of my top five favorite books. If you haven't read it, make a mental note, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. But this quote comes from him, and I just love it. Um, before I go to the quote, he, he's referencing a, a trellis, and I'm going to go ahead and explain what a trellis is. Um, you know, like at a vineyard where they make wine, uh, they have all of the grapevines, like beautiful vineyard, vineyard, and what's holding up the grapevines are these trellises. And what the trellis is, is, is the either metal or wooden structure that the grapevine wraps around and grows upon. And it's, they're long, they go out through the fields. Can you all kind of picture that, imagine that? Okay, so hold that in your mind as I read this quote from his book. What a trellis is to a vine, a rule of life is to abiding. It's a structure, in this case, a schedule and a set of practices to set up abiding as the central pursuit of your life. If a vine doesn't have a trellis, it will die. If your life without Jesus doesn't have some kind of structure to facilitate health and growth, it will wither away. It's a way to organize all of your life around the practice of the presence of God. This is my trellis. I have experienced so much fruit, a personal, what I would like to call, I shared yet, uh, last week, about a year and a half ago, I started experiencing a personal revival, a personal revolution when I created a trellis, a structure for me to wrap myself around and begin encountering the presence of the Lord in my home and begin meeting with him. So the, some, of it, some of these things are going to be things that you already do, you're aware of. Maybe you're doing all of these things. And you're like, oh, okay, got it, great. And you can come tell me all the things that you're doing, and I'll add on to what I'm doing. We'll learn from the body of Christ. Um, but one thing that makes a big difference when I'm about to go in and spend some time with the Lord is to set myself up for success by putting away distractions. I don't know how this happens, but if my calendar is in within reaching distance, somehow it like inches its way closer to me and I am making to-do list for 2025. And my 30 minutes of quietness that I have to myself is completely gone. And so you know the things that just, whether it's work, kids, making that lunch, having that work conversation, whatever it is, you know the things that start creeping it in. And to go ahead and set yourself up for success and don't allow them in reaching distance. And sometimes it's like we have to remind, like imagine as if we were a child and it's like you're putting all this chocolate in front of them. Okay, now don't touch it. You know? Um, So... Anyways, yeah, set yourself up for success by putting away distractions. One other thing that does help me, because if you're like me, a lot of times when you go get away and it's quiet, you're you're still running on this momentum and all these things are flashing through your head, and you need a place to put down some of your thoughts that you need to get back to. And so um, on my little prompts, the very last thing I have written on there is kind of to-dos or responsibilities things I need to get back to. And so if I have a reminder of like, oh yeah, I need to call so-and-so, I write it down and then I go back. And so I release it. I'm not going to go do it because if I do that one thing, all of a sudden I'm working, I'm making my kids lunches. Like I just get in this to-do mode, but I'm like, okay, I'm not in the to-do mode. I'm in the secret place mode. I'm in my quiet time mode. Okay. That has been really helpful for me to have a place just to release all the thoughts that come because I'm afraid that I'm going to forget it if I don't uh, write it down. 
So the first thing I have on here is called reflection and growth. And this is really kind of just reviewing my yesterday with the Lord. What am I thankful for? What went well yesterday? Or what was an answer to prayer? You see, the Lord in in the Old Testament, he told his people, remember, remember, remember who I am. Remember what I've brought you through. Remember what I've done for you. In Psalms 143, it says, I remember the days of old. I meditate on all that you have done, and I ponder the works of your hand. God, where were you yesterday? And the first thing that comes to mind, just go with it. As long as it is biblical and life-giving, it's probably from him. And anything that's good comes from above, because God is the creator of good. There's nothing else that can be good that's not from God. So if you saw a beautiful butterfly, God made the butterfly, and that was good. And if it blessed you, that was his blessing for you. It doesn't matter how big or small, God, you healed my leg. It doesn't matter what it is. It's from God. But what you'll begin to notice throughout time, as you continue to do this, just spend a little bit of time with God, what did you do, and meditating on it and giving him the glory for it, all of a sudden you have a record of the goodness of God in your life. And years down the road, months down the road, when you begin feeling doubts of, God, are you really there? Do you really care? Do you heal? You have your own personal record that answers those questions. And it's not someone else answering those questions. It's God in your life answering those questions. And that's so powerful. The next part I like to call the refining time. Don't we all like to be refined? (laughs) What's an opportunity for growth? You see what I did there? Let's call it an opportunity. What's an opportunity from an opportunity for growth from yesterday? And God, what do you want to tell me about it? A lot of times this is where habits and cycles are revealed. And it's like, oh wow. Flipping the page, flipping the page. For the past five years, I've been eating two slices of cake every night, and I don't feel good after it. Huh, would you look at that? But a lot of times, if we're not really writing down these, like what's going on that we don't, that's not settling well with us that happened yesterday, and you feel like you need to grow, and if we're not writing it down, then a lot of times we don't realize, oh, this is continuing to happen, and I'm, this is a trend in my life, and I need to bring the Lord into it. Amen. Um, in Psalms 139.23, I love this verse. Search me thoroughly, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts and see if there's any wicked or hurtful way in me and lead me in the everlasting way. This is where we go before the Father and we pull open everything and we say, okay, come and look. And I can do that because you're safe. You don't shame me. You're not scared of what you're going to see. You are love. But he leads us in the everlasting way. He guides us out of it. And he wants to give you that, that, that word and get, take your hand and be like, hey, we need to be, bring the body of Christ into this. You need to call someone. Hey, I have a new way for you. I have freedom for you. Let me show you what that's going to look like. There's a lot of things he wants to do and speak to you, but if we're not asking him and letting him search us, any place in me, God, I trust you. So that's kind of what that that time is for. And again, some of these, I don't really feel the Lord touching on anything, and I just kind of move on through. Um, But it's one great way to really just feel like you're honest before yourself and before the Lord. Um. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure Jonathan is glad that I do this because he gets to experience the benefit of that when I'm doing this with the Lord. So all you spouses can, be like, kick each other and be like, hey, did you hear that? Are you going to do that? <laughs> you see, it's, it's healthy to realize our need for Jesus. Jesus is quoting the Old Testament in Isaiah, and Jesus says, God's Spirit is upon me. He's chosen me to preach the message of good news to the poor. 
He sent to announce pardon to the prisoners. Do any of you feel prisoned by anything? Do you feel addicted to anything? Do you feel like I just can't get out? To recover sight of, to the blind. Do you feel lost anywhere? Like, I just don't know what to do. To set the burden and the battered free. Do any of you just feel like heavy laden? Banged up with the, from the world. Banged up for what's going on in your life. And, it's, and Jesus said it's his word to announce that it's God's time to shine. And what he wants to do in this place with you in this refining time is he wants to speak to those places and shine and pull you into newness, pull you into absolute freedom. There's a lot of revival, renewing that can happen in this place with the Lord. A lot of times it, it does involve the body of Christ as well. Then um, he'll lead you into that if that's the case for you or whatever. He'll like, I just trust the Holy Spirit is inside of you and is alive and is speaking to you. If we don't acknowledge the areas that we're needy, we're robbing ourselves of experiencing God's supernatural salvation in that given situation. The next thing we have on here is just the the encounter props. So these are just all different ways to encounter the presence of the living God in your living room, at the kitchen, wherever you do your secret place, wherever you do your quiet times. The first thing that I do is I give my fears, worries, and mental distractions into the hands of Jesus. What I, I, what I literally do is I picture my hands like this and like whatever's in the forefront of my mind, like, okay, I need to do this today. I need to make that phone call, whatever it is. I'm, I feel like I'm kind of carrying this. I'm worried about that. I picture myself putting it in my hands and I picture Jesus in front of me and then like lifting it up to him and he takes it and he's like, okay, I got it. You don't have to carry this anymore. You just get to be free and be with me. We'll come back to that. We'll talk about that. There's a place for that. But I just want to meet with you right now. And all of a sudden, I just feel lighter. I'm like, okay, I can trust you. I can put that away, and I can be fully present. In Luke 10, 38 through 42, y'all are, most of you will be very familiar with the story of Mary and Martha Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving, with much work, with much kids, with much this, with much that. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me alone to serve? Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. What we begin to realize here is that all of our to-dos, all the work, all the other things at some point will die when the world dies. But our time with the Father is the one thing that's eternal. And it goes with us. He's saying you can build something here and now that transcends to the kingdom of heaven when you go there. Isn't that cool? Makes me want to go be with Jesus, doesn't it, you? Uh, I was like, is that my phone? <laughs> I was like, oh, no, Jonathan. Um, what I, I kind of picture this time being like, a, I picture myself in like a cord from me to my work, me to my kids, me to all the little responsibilities that I have, and the Lord going like this with scissors, just come be with me. I've got it all. Let's invest in this, okay? Um, one of my favorite things that I do, this is probably like my one, if I do anything in the secret place, if I have two minutes because my child woke up at 4.30 a.m., you know, this is what I do. And it's this crafted prayer that the Lord wrote with me. And if you don't know what a crafted prayer is, really it's a prayer that we write with God that's based off of scripture for a specific purpose. And the specific purpose of this prayer is to center myself upon the Lord. And I will say that every single morning that I read this prayer, 
almost immediately, I experience and feel the fire of God on my back. I don't know why on my back, but I feel warmth on my back. And it's like him saying, like, I'm on this. So I'm going to read this prayer over you. You can take this prayer. You can make your own prayer with the Lord um, however you want. But I really pray that it blesses you the way it's blessed me. Uh, we, ha- we put it on the back of the card because it didn't really fit and look as pretty to put it on the front. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to read this over you, and you can read with me. It's on the back. Lord, I submit this time to you. Come and rush in with a mighty flood of your presence, power, and word. My heart is to know you. Still me. Quiet my mind and soul. Mind, I call you to lay down responsibilities, to-dos, ideas, worries, and desires into the hands of the good, good Father, for he is trustworthy. Heart, I declare openness and a tender softening over you, for my God is safe. Will, I bless you to come into alignment with your first love, for my God is holy and sovereign. Body, I command you to enter into heaven's healing, peace, and fullness, for God is healing, love, restorer, and redeemer. Come, Lord Jesus. I open myself entirely to you in your communion. I will wait here for you. I will wait and follow your presence into intimacy, encounter, understanding, and your glory. Whenever I pray that prayer, I feel ready. I feel centered. And I feel like the Lord does does those things for me. So I pray that 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 prayer blesses you as it has me. Um, Of course, as always, uh, in the secret place, I love having a time to encounter the Lord through worship and through a prayer language and through our prayer language. In Psalms 104, it says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. You see, there's a reason why when you come to church, we start with worship. It sets yourself up to put your eyes on him and off of the world. And all of a sudden, You're in awe of who he is and his glory. And that begins to influence the rest of your day, the rest of your life, the rest of all this. When we bring to mind what he has done through worship, like if if I'm worshiping to a song, great is thy faithfulness. And I start thinking, okay, God, like how have you been faithful to me? And I think about, oh, wow. When I had my first son, Johnny, he was in the NICU for two months, and we didn't know if he was going to make it at one point, and you pulled him through. And I'm singing from that place. You better bet my heart is in it. And I stay in worship until my heart is moved. Sometimes I don't do anything else but worship because I really want to encounter who he is and what he's done for me before I move on to my to-dos and anything else. I want my heart to be softened. And many times when we bring to mind what he's done through worship, it opens our heart to what he's about to do. It softens us and it it produces faith and hope. And a lot of times we need that hope and faith built before we hear what he's calling us to do in whatever next situation. When we start talking to him about our day and this and that, and he's like, oh yeah, well you can do the possible because I, we, you just talked to me about what you did for my son this morning. You know, he, he will perfectly line it up. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> you know, uh, prayer languages, people can be kind of scared of that. Like, oh, I don't know what that is. I've never experienced that. That's kind of weird. But if you have experienced it, you know that it's the most comforting, strengthening thing. And I remember one time when I was at Bethel and I was like 15 years old and all these people were like shaking in the spirit or and talking in tongues. And I was like, you know, Lord, I don't know what that is. But if that's of you, then I want it. And what the Lord taught me in that moment is don't judge it. Let me bring you into it if it's me. But don't judge it. 
Because what judgment does is it blocks you in from experiencing things. And, but God's not going to force you into anything. He'll ki- bring you into things with kindness. And it will usually also require some faith and some risk. And later as we close, Erica's going to close out. And have, we're going to have some ministry time if you haven't experienced Um, the Lord releasing a prayer language over you, we would love to pray for you and for you to experience that. But in Romans 8, 26, it says, Moreover, in like manner, the Spirit also joins in to help us in our weakness, for we do not know for what we should pray as is fitting. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Those groanings are what we call tongues or the, our prayer language. And it's like, when I don't know what to pray. Lord, you know what to pray. And, and isn't that a great prayer? Whatever you're praying, I definitely want to be praying. <laughs> and it's a way to be like, God, I don't know what to say right now. I don't know what to do. And I have found that when I just start praying in my prayer language, before I know it, I am like going somewhere with the Lord. And it like, like just skyrockets me somewhere. And, and it's just like this release of, okay, I just trust you, and it really does guide you, and it's really, really blessed me, and I would love for everyone in this room to experience that. This next prompt or way to encounter the Lord is through resting in the Lord with, with no agenda. If you've had children, you've experienced this. When you have a child come and lay on your arms, especially like a two or three year old, and they put their head on your your chest, and they just rest there, and they're awake, and you're awake, and they they're just like cuddling into you, and they're not resisting you, and like looking over here, looking over there, and fighting you. There is just this intimate connection that like words can't even express, and there's. It, the word intimacy perfectly describes that. And the Lord is inviting some of you here today into an intimate place with him. And I just feel like there's these thoughts of, oh, that's for women, or oh, that's for children. And the Lord's like, oh, wait, I'm the father, you're the son, you're a child. You're a child. And he wants to bring you to come and rest on him, to experience his peace like none other. I have a cousin who his son, um, he was maybe five years old, he um, had like a really bad cold and was coughing and wheezing and it's in the middle of the night and they have three other boys actually and they're like, do we take him to the ER? I mean, in the middle of the night, what do we do with all the other kids? He's really, really sick and the dad brought his son and said, hey son, I want you to come and just lay on my chest and all I want you to do is sit and focus on is match your breathing with mine. It's all, let go of every other thought because he was really worried. He was scared. So the son just lay on his chest, and within a few minutes, the wheezing went away, and he was completely fine because he was all he was focused on was matching his father's breathing. And that's what sometimes we need to do is just go lay on the father's chest and just get away from all the other things that are on our mind and just focus on his peace and his breathing. One of my favorite stories is when our third son, we have three, three boys too, um, our third son, right after we had him, and you can imagine right after you have a child, there's just like so many hormones going on and uh, such lack of sleep. But Jojo, when he was born, Josiah, we call him Jojo, he, um, he, he, they did like a hearing screening for all newborn babies. They do a hearing screening to make sure they can hear in both ears. And the first day they did the hearing screening right after I had him, and he failed the hearing screening. And I'm like, is he going to be deaf? Like, is he going to hear? And, you know, I just went to the extreme. And um, the next day they, they said, well, we'll come back in the next day and test him again because sometimes fluids can be in their ears and all these things. And I'm like, okay. So something that's interesting is that when they do a hearing screening, they have this um, 
monitor that they put on their chest that measures the, the level of internal noise that's going on inside of them. And it's kind of like how distracted they are um, and all these things that they're, the, all of this noise that they're kind of registering in their minds as kind of like distractions. So they come in the next day and they kind of put the ear things on them and the little monitor that registers the internal noise. And as soon as they put that on them, she's like, oh, his internal noise is at 70%. I was like, oh, okay. And, but I just feel like I had this unction from the Lord. And so I was like, excuse me, nurse, is there any way that I could hold him while you do the screening? And she was like, well, no one's ever asked me that before, but sure. I was like, okay, thank you, I'd like to. And so I hold Jojo, and I'm just praying over him. And all of a sudden, the nurse goes, wow. His internal noise just went from 70% to zero. That's what happens when we rest on the Lord. The noise of the world, all the things, goes from 70, whatever percentage that you're in, to zero when we really let ourselves lean in and just be with the Father. I'm going to receive your peace. I, make, I envision it almost like a tea bag, and we're like the hot cup of water, and he's the tea, like all the goodness, all the peace, all the wisdom, all the joy is in this tea bag. And when our hunger, that hot water, meets that tea bag, all of the nutrients, all of who he is that makes him up is, is coming into the tea. And when you take a sip of the tea, it tastes like what? The tea bag. And so when we are experiencing the Father, what we begin to replicate to the world is the Father. We're his light. There's a chemical in the body called oxytocin. Um, that so sometimes scientists call this the cuddle hormone. This is because it, its levels rise when we hug, touch, or sit close to someone else. Oxytocin is associated with happiness and less stress. Oxytocin causes a reduction in blood pressure and the stress hormone norepinephrine. I can't pronounce that wherever the nurses are in the room. So I believe that we experience supernatural oxytocin when we go and rest with the Father, that that stress, the, the stress levels are coming down and we're experiencing him, the joy of the Lord. And I've experienced that in the secret place, in my quiet times with him. That's not something I do every single day. It's more of like when I just feel like I need it, and, and usually I do. <laughs> Another thing I want to share with you is about um, intercession and processing what's happening in your life right now. This is kind of basic, um, but a lot of times it's kind of like, God, what's going on in my life? And then what do you want to say about it? I'm just listening to him and bringing him in, into it and anything he wants to say. This is also where I, for me, I have like every single, I'm pretty organized, every single day of the week, I have different people that I pray for. I want to be known that at the end of my life that my friends are like, yeah, Kate Henderson, when she said she prayed for me, she got on her knees for me. I want my children to know that I was declaring and praying and making a way for them every single week of their lives. I want to take on their burdens with them, and I want to experience their victories with them. And so I know like certain days of the week, I have friends, family members that I'm asking the Lord for. And sometimes it's like a quick little thing. And sometimes it's a, the Lord's leading me deeper into it. Again, the Holy Spirit, your guide will lead you. And the more you do it, the more you'll get used to it and accustomed to it, just like anything else. Um, another way to encounter the Lord is through scripture and reading in scripture. And the first thing I do and is I just kind of, after I read, I, have, I go through like the Bible in a year plan, but I've been in the Bible a year plan for probably three or four years now because I do it at Kate's pace. <laughs> um, but just because I like when I open up the word of God, I just like to know where I'm going and where I am. I don't have to spend some time thinking about now where should I go and flip open the Bible. That works for me. Find what works for you. Um, but I'll read a segment and then I just kind of jot down, okay, what's the overview of this? What did I hear? 
And then one thing that I've realized is really helpful because I'm a doer, I can quickly hear love is patient, love is kind. I, let's say we, I read that. All of a sudden, I'm like, okay, I need to be patient and kind. So I'm going to go be patient and kind, and that's my focus all day long to the world around me. But I didn't first experience God being my patience, how he's being patient with me and kind with me. Because then, all of a sudden, I'm giving out from something that I know in my head I'm supposed to do, and quickly it starts feeling like a burden, and it starts feeling heavy, and that I ought to, and that I should do, and that's not who Jesus is. If you begin feeling, I ought, I should, then you need a fresh encounter with the presence of the holy, living, good God, and probably some of that resting in him. I ask the Lord after I read the word of God, God, what does this say about you and who you are? And how do you want me to experience that right now? Okay, show me how patient you are. Wow, you've been really patient with me and that I've been eating two slices of cake every single night for five years and I haven't done anything about it. <laughs> and you're not in a hurry. You're okay. You love me. But now you're saying it's time to address that, that issue. <laughs> I'm just using a silly example, but you know what I mean. And then I go into, how does this impact the way I want to live? And typically, if I'm really experiencing, whoa, you have that kind of patience for me? I like can't wait to show this kind of patience to my kids. And I'm like full of it, and it's coming from an overflow, and not a you overflow, a God overflow. And that's what's impacting the world. I'm going to try to fly through here a little bit um, because of time. The, uh, the last thing, and you would not know what this is unless you're a Cole forehand and you are an English history buff, but this question is kind of fun. It says, what's in the red box for today? Let me tell you about what the red box is. It's an image that is deeply associated with the monarchy is the famous red box. It's a briefcase style box covered in red leather that is used to convey daily dispatches from the government to the monarch. So every single day, the queen or king of England will receive a red box. And it's pretty much, these are all the things that are going on to, in the United Kingdom of England and parliament that you need to know about. And so for me, what this represents is, okay, God, we've talked about all my stuff. What's on your mind? What's going on in the kingdom of heaven that you want me to know about? And that brings us outside of our box and into his. This is one of my favorite quotes from Heather Johnston from her book, Uncommon Favor. Another in my, it's like also in my top five. And I don't read many books. Maybe I've only read five books, but this is one of them. <laughs> um, he consistently, he, God consistently answers the prayers of those who order their priorities, decisions, and lifestyles in alignment with his priorities. Let me read that again. He consistently answers the prayers of those who order their priorities, decisions, and lifestyle in alignment with his priorities. Cole, you can go ahead and come up too. Um, if I'm taking care of his things, you better bet he's going to take care of my things. And it's like if I tell my son, hey, honey, I need to go get your shoes on and I need you to go brush your hair. I'm going to take care of packing his lunch and all the other things that's going on in the house and getting the groceries. Like, he didn't have to worry about that. I'm giving him his assignment. And there are some assignments from God that he's calling you to that you would never think your way to, but he will call you into when you kind of say, okay, God, what do you want to say to me? Take me outside of my box. What's going on inside of the kingdom of heaven? And John 4, 34, it says, For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is Jesus saying, I'm coming to do what the Father's called me to do. And this is where we get aligned up. God, what are you calling me to do here on earth? You have a, di a divine purpose for me to leave a stamp here. What is that? I hope that these prompts really take you into a deeper place in the presence of the living God. I bless your ears to hear him, for you to know that you do hear him. 
if you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. If you don't, we would love to pray with you so that you can receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you are hungry to receive your prayer language, if you are hungry to go to a deeper place with the Father, we would love to pray over you and minister over you. Here, go on and go.